Hey there, Hawks fans. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Hawthorne HQ. I've noticed there aren't really any Hawthorne fan channels out there, so I just thought I'd start my own and share my passion for this amazing football club with you all. I know it's very late in the year to be uploading footy content, however, I reckon it is the perfect time for me to get the hang of this editing and content creation thing in preparation for next season. For my first video, we will be discussing who Hawthorne will be thinking of delisting and re-signing to free up some list space for our incoming draftees and hopefully some really key signings. First up, we obviously have Max Lynch. Every AFL fan feels for this bloke. He has immense talent as a ruckman. And unfortunately, we just had to see his career cut short after only 10 AFL games due to multiple concussions. As sad as it is to see him go though, it's honestly a bit of a blessing for our list since we have plenty of depth in this position and an extra list spot will be very handy. Uh, but we will all miss you, Lynchy. Thank you for your service as a Hawthorne player. Okay, into the main section of this video. First up, we have Joshua Bennett's. Uh, Bennett's was added to our list as a Category B rookie at the end of 22, being a graduate of our Next Generation Academy. He was recruited as a crafty small forward midfielder with some of his best attributes being his classy ball use, particularly up forward in the Coates Talent League. Unfortunately for Bennett's, we haven't really seen him break through into the senior team this year, despite playing some decent footy at Box Hill. Uh, he's been averaging 13 disposals and just under a goal a game, playing predominantly as a half forward. Unfortunately, I don't think he's shown enough to warrant signing him on for another year. For now, I'm going to have to say D-list. Our second player on the chopping block is Lockie Bramble. Bramble has had a pretty weird year. We were all excited about his emergence in 2021. I personally was pretty hyped watching him break lines and provide that dash of pace and run and carry that we seem to have lacked over the past five years. I think where he really lets himself down is his ball use. This year he's traveling at about 67 disposal efficiency, which hurts a bit as a rebounding defender slash wing type of player. I think Bramble does add depth to our midfield though, so I'd like to see him offer a one year contract to see if he can improve on his disposal. Uh, but unfortunately, tough calls need to be made, and for the purpose of this video, I will say D-list. Okay, Tyler Brockman. It was really pleasing to see Brocky play a big chunk of senior footy this year. He's obviously had a pretty rough start to his career since being drafted in 2020. There were reports earlier in the year, and particularly right now, that he is exploring a move back home to Perth, and I can definitely see that happening. Obviously, we'd love to see him stay. He's a really crafty ball user and definitely has potential to be a great small forward in the future, uh, averaging about a goal a game and 77 disposal efficiency. He needs to work on his forward 50 pressure for sure. I think that's something a lot of our small forwards struggle with, but particularly with Brocky, I was very frustrated watching him at times this year. If he wants to stay, I think we keep him, obviously, although I am kind of expecting him to entertain a move back home. I will say keep for the purpose of this video, though. Alright, next up is Fergus Green. Ferg really stepped up at the start of this year when Mitch Lewis was out of the side through injury. While he's not really ever going to be that first or second option up forward at AFL level, I think he does deserve another year to show what he can do and he's just a really handy depth player. He kicked one and a half goals per game in 2023 and he had a few matches where he kicked multiple goals. I'm going to say we keep him around for another year just for forward depth. All right, this is the part of the video where we're going to have to make some really tough calls. Emerson Jekka. Uh, I think Jekka is a terrific footballer. However, it's clear he doesn't really have what it takes to be a solid key position player at AFL level. He has been tried as a defender since late in the season last year and has actually shown some promise. I think he looked better than when he was a forward for sure. This year in the VFL, he is averaging 14 disposals a game, just over six marks a game, which is okay. He's definitely showing improvement at the moment and finding his way as a defender. I just don't think we can keep him unless we find ourselves exiting the offseason with no signings in this position. It is an area of the ground where we need a lot more quality, and if we are going to concede less beltings next year, I think getting rid of players like Jekka will be handy. We just need a really good quality key position defender. So unfortunately for Jekka, I will say D-list. The next player on the list is Jacob Kashitsky. So, Kozzi is a really weird one for me. If I made this video halfway through the year, I would have said hard D list, but I think he has shown enough in this late stage of this year to deserve a lift spot for next season. 
This year, he hasn't even averaged a goal a game in the seniors, which is a bit disappointing, but he has shown a physical presence down the line, averaging about two contested marks a game. He has slightly better numbers in the VFL, which is expected for someone of his size. For now, I'm going to say re-sign on a one-year deal for dev purposes, but unfortunately for Cozzy, I don't think we will see him play a part in our next finals push unless he improves drastically. Ned Long is going to be a really tough call uh, for our list management team. I really like Longy. I think at VFL level, he is a ball and really displays his ball winning capability. He has had a few opportunities this year, starting in three and coming on as the sub in one game, I think. I might be wrong in saying that, but either way, he just hasn't shown that same ball winning capability at senior level. In the VFL, he's averaging a whopping 25 disposals a game. It's just really disappointing that he hasn't brought that to the first team. It's really hard because we are currently seeing our midfield shine in this aspect, with players like Nuke, Warps, and Nash stepping up in the absence of Tich and O'Meara. I think Longy could be on an AFL list again in the future. However, I think he really needs to work on his craft and battle away in the VFL for a while before he sees any AFL time. It's really hard, but for now, I'm going to say D-list. All right, well, uh, Finn McGuinness, I was going to say that we had to re-sign him. I made this video just before the announcement that he was going to be re-signed until the end of 2025. He obviously is one of the best taggers in the league. Famously, he has kept players like Dacos, Kelly, Oliver, and Liver to career lows. It's just a little disappointing that on game day, he doesn't really add much other than the defensive side of his game. Out of the 32 games we've seen him play, we've never really seen him add up a lot of touches, show pack breaking speed, or consistently hit up targets. It'll be interesting to see what we do with Finn over the next couple of years. I really did want him to stay, so I think it's very pleasing to see him sign on. Alright, next up it's Seamus Mitchell. This guy just came out of nowhere this season. He really stepped up in the absence of CJ with providing some burst out of defense. He is obviously still really raw and his disposal needs some work, but I think we may have found a gem in this bloke. I really liked what I saw in key moments this year. He really takes the game on and I think that suits Sam Mitchell's game plan perfectly. It'll be interesting to see where he fits uh, with key players returning next year, uh, but I think he has done enough to deserve a contract. Josh Morris is probably one of the unluckiest players in the AFL. We saw a mini emergence last year when he played a few games and looked decent, but injuries and bad form has prevented him from breaking into the senior side. Just like Ned Long, I think he might have potential to find his way onto another AFL list in the future, but as we do need list spots for next season, I just don't think we can justify signing Josh on next year. I'll be sad to see him go personally. Okay, next up is Fionn or Finn O'Hara. I'm not too sure how you pronounce it. Uh, international prospects are always really difficult to judge. You can't really assess them the same way you would any other player from a development point of view. I honestly haven't really watched much of this bloke. The few VFL games I managed to watch this year as a South Aussie fan, I didn't notice him. Uh, it's clear that he is struggling to find his way in our game at this stage of his career. It's really hard to make this call as we have shown that backing these international players can pay off. Just have a look at Nashi, for example. I just can't see him breaking into our AFL side if he was to be given another chance, so I will say D-list. Next up is our signing of the season. Nothing but positive things to say about Brandon Ryan. What a story this guy is. I have been very impressed with what he has been able to do at AFL level, even though it's a small sample size. I reckon he will slot in nicely as a third tool who can take some contested marks up forward next year. I just hope that he builds some muscle over the offseason. He was integral in that win against Collingwood, and I'm sure all of us are hoping that he can replicate that same form next year. Resign for sure. Okay, getting to the latter end of this list is uh, Jai Sarong. This is going to be another huge call for our list management. Obviously, Jai had a serious heart condition, which kept him out for a huge chunk of 2023. He's showing a lot of promise and improvement as a defender at the moment, and I'd really love to see him on our list next year and see if we can get some games into him. Obviously, we do need to delist six to seven players realistically, so I can definitely see him being cut. I just hope that if that is the case, we can pick him up as a rookie, as I do believe he does deserve another chance to show what he can do. Being in the same bloodline as Caleb Sarong, who's one of the best mids in the comp right now, I think we can only hope that talent runs through that family and Jai can also shine. 
All right, the last player on this list is Chad Wingard. Now, this is probably the one that all of you guys were waiting for. Wingard finally showed Hawthorne fans a glimpse of what we were expecting since he was traded from Port in 2018. I obviously still think that we lost that trade since we gave up Ryan Burden and a draft pick that ended up being Xavier Dersma, uh, who are two solid players at Port. I think our list is still hurting from this trade. It definitely set us back a number of years. I think having experience on a list like ours is paramount to player development, but obviously we won't even see Chad next year due to his Achilles injury if he was to be signed on. I think the optimal scenario for all parties here is for him to just retire, unfortunately. I don't think any other team is going to want an injured wing guard in the twilight of his playing days, and I just can't see him being a Hawk in 2024. All right, Hawthorne fans. Well, that was all of the players who are left without a contract in 2024. Let me know what you guys think of my decisions in the comments down below. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what we do over the next couple of weeks in terms of a list management point of view. Uh, I am very excited to get this channel off the ground though. So I hope that all who have watched up until this point enjoy the video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.